new washing machine, so I thought before I use this, before I even take it in, I'll uh, take it to bits and see what it's like. So it's a typical front loader, very common in the UK with the stainless steel drum. Uh, it's got the standard soap compartment, the two compartments, and then the conditioner, which I never really use, it just makes things greasy feeling. And interestingly for that, it's only got two solenoid valves. And more interestingly again, it's only got one water inlet. It, traditionally, uh, any machine I've had in the past has had hot and cold inlet. But this one's just got a single cold inlet, and it's got a heater built into the machine at the bottom, as I'll show you later. The solenoid assembly seems to attach uh, with these two screws. I'm guessing it's just a couple of O-rings that connect onto this solid plastic water diversion plate. And the water diversion plate is solid all the way along here. And inside here, it either diverts the water, it, well, it diverts the bulk of the water straight down to fill the machine. But it seems to use clever diversion techniques. I'm not sure how it achieves it yet, but I'm thinking it can air squirt water into here, here, or here using just two valves. So I'm thinking that the water may be deflected when the two valves are open together, it may actually create a sort of channeling effect to squirt the water over here. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll see that when the machine's running. Uh, other things at the top, the fill level uh, is done by pressure with this hose and this sort of diaphragm switch. I've never seen one this shape before. It's all pretty interesting. The Door lock mechanism is very small and very accessible, which makes it a refreshing change. To get the top off this machine, you remove a couple of screws at the back, and then the whole thing just being it, it, well, it just slides back that way, and it just basically hooks in under the front here. The control panel in these machines tends to be one circuit board for every single model, uh, and they just populate it you know, with the appropriate number of knobs and things like that. And often you'll find if you take these PCBs off that there are, say for instance, if there was another model with that luxury function of, uh, you know, some like amount of soap or something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure what sort of things they'd add. But uh, it uh, would have another uh, pattern of contacts behind here for another knob. You know, it's just, they just add all these features. And the only difference between these machines is often uh, the software. The mains comes in, and it goes into this easily changed module at the back here, which has got the suppression circuitry in it as well, the filter. There's a huge weight in top, and there's also one in the bottom as well. That's for stability. At the back, the front control panel is just a very cheap phenolic-type circuit board. Um, and it's got one, two, three, four, it's got five connections on it, just five wires. I would normally expect power and data Maybe four wires, but I wonder why they've got another one. Maybe um, maybe it's uh, got a wake-up function, um, and that uses an extra connection. It's got the suspension springs here. Not very visible. That one's more visible for uh, giving some basic suspension. It's not going to move much because the transit bolts are still in. Anything else to cover at the front here, or do I tip the machine up? Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at the back. The back, rather oddly, and I've never seen this before, not in the machine I've owned, uh, it's unfortunately got a plastic uh, pulley on the back of the drum. All the previous ones have been aluminium. That's a bit odd, actually. I'm not so sure I'm comfortable about that. Particularly, these aren't solid plastic struts. It's, sort of cur it's hollow if you, you can get your finger around the back and into that channel. So I wonder how long these last. Uh, moving on to the bottom of the machine, let's uh, cope this over. Let's see if I can do this without dropping the machine excessively violently. Underneath is just open, giving complete access, which is interesting. And we've got the... I could have shown that from the back. We've got the heating element here with uh, the temperature sensor, two-hour temperature sensor connector, live neutral and an earth connection. We've got the motor, and here's something quite interesting. There's the uh, encoder in the back, the servo that, well, servo, is, is that a really good word for it? It Basically, it's the feedback. It's a coil-based feed feedback that it will put back proportionate, you know, pulses or voltage to the control system. But normally I'd expect uh, this to be a universal motor with four connections coming to it, two to the, the uh, rotor and two to the stator. 
And then I saw three wires and thought, oh right, they'll have a common to both of them, but I don't see any brushes, and I'm guessing this is actually a three-phase motor in here, effectively, being driven by an electronic drive. Um, the pump is here, the drainage pump. Just one pump on the bottom that uh, diverts the water along this grey pipe here to the back. Um, what else is down here that's worth looking at? Well, the main processor. Let's get under there. Uh, there's the main processor, and these things uh, are basically a universal little control computer. Uh, commonly, you know, the one unit is used for a wide range of modules with just a different number of features. Usually, again, because, you know, the fill solenoid valve, the motor, uh, I'm guessing that these fins here, they're probably to do with the motor drive. Um, and fundamentally, it's just a, a little self-contained control computer dedicated to the task, and it will be used as standard in amongst a wide variety of machines. The only thing that will change is software, and the software can be updated or changed according to the model. If they have to update a model, uh, usually there's a little programming port in the back that they can just whip that off, and underneath it will be a programming connector they can just plug in and uh, update the software in it. Uh, so there's another weight at the bottom, and the gas strut to actually act as a bit of shock absorbing, and that's fundamentally it. Uh, I'm seeing another plastic drainage type port there, I'm not sure what that's about. And this plastic drum, <clears throat> normally that would be sort of, I'm guessing maybe it is fiberglass reinforced plastic, though it doesn't look like it, not sure. Previous ones have looked more fiberglassy. Uh, but I'm guessing it's in two distinct sections, the back section and the front. And this model is not the smallest capacity, it's got a slightly higher capacity, which means the machine is deeper from the front to the back. And I'm guessing that this front section is the main bit that changes, and this is a fairly standard uh, length section. Could be wrong. One of these will, one of these mouldings will probably be standard, and the other one will be available in different depths. And the motor is just a... Uh, I don't see any tensioning. Oh, blame me, that's just hooked onto plastic pins, the motor. I don't see any tensioning system for the belt. I think it just relies on the belt being a specific length and being a specific flexibility. So um, that's the inside of a typical modern British washing machine.